Fashion TV interviewing Tyrone Dubois. Greetings and salutations to you, Miss Alexander. I could not be better. Life is great. Well, I bet it is with a voice like that. Where did it come from? Uh, my mother told me that she was concerned about me as I was getting older. And she said, young man, this voice is going to make you a lot of money or get you in a lot of trouble. And to the camera, I have no comment on <laughs> either. I was hoping for a comment, but okay, that's fine. How about this? Uh, what are you wearing today? Okay, so this is cool because like I wasn't sure what I was going to wear and I never paid much attention. So this suit today that I have on is from Vince Camuto, which is kind of cool because I was like, okay, I have that in my closet. That was cool. And in my cologne, I got the cologne for Vince Camuto. And I'm also wearing a, a Michael Kors shirt and tie, which is which is kind of cool. Oh, you are a fashionable man. I, I had no idea. I didn't get them from Ross. I don't know if I got it from Ross or what, but at least it had its name on it, so I'm good. Well, you look good. Uh, you thank look you so much. <laughs> now, the first time I noticed you was on Ensemble. And after that, I seen you out at a couple of galas. But I want to know, how did you get on Ensemble? Unsung happened about? because uh, of a gentleman named Michael who uh, was one of my good friends and I learned he, he needed me to help him to do an interview with one of his Unsung episodes. When I first started, he asked me, he wanted me to do Ray Parker Jr. But because I had just gotten out of the hospital with cancer, my face was really thin. And so he asked me later what I'd be willing to, you know, to come and interview people. And once I got there to do the interview, um, I was sitting next to this gentleman and I struck up a conversation with this gentleman. He just said, I wonder if Sly had any platinum singles. I said, no, he never had any platinum singles, but he had the number 24th and 25th biggest songs of the 70s. And then he started asking, what about the Temptations? What about Diane Ross? And I found myself getting a little irritated. And I said, sir, the first platinum single in history, Johnny Taylor, Disco Lady, 1975. And he said, well, who was number I went, kiss and say goodbye, the Manhattans? He says, how do you know that? I said, I do this show. You know, my mentor was Casey Kasem. I used to listen to American Top 40 as a kid. And, you know, I always wanted to be like him. So I used to study the charts and stuff like that all the time. And so I gave him a card. A couple of weeks later, he calls me, tells me to come to a place called Toluca Lake, which I had no idea where Toluca Lake. I was like, what is that, a beach? Which I didn't know. I get to this place and I found out that this gentleman was the executive producer of Unsung and asked me to come on uh, to be on television. And that's wow. how it started. I, I just, your voice is so insanely wonderful that it's, a, it's, a, it's like amazing. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I have to tell you something else. A little birdie told me that you were writing a book. I am. In fact, it's called The Four Seasons of R&B. And I called it The Four Seasons of R&B because it's based on my personal countdown of the top artists from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Because that decade between the 60s and the 90s were some of the biggest acts in, in R&B history. And um, it, it was important for me to figure out which top 10 artists were the best of mine. And it was based on their, their gold, you know, their gold platinum singles. And also I used different charts as well, including not just Billboard, but I used Cashbox and um, Record World as well. Okay. Now I have a question for you. <clears throat> You're such a historian. I want to know that you mentioned a little while ago that you actually watched or listened to Casey Kasem. I did. Okay, is that where it began or did it begin before that? Well, for me, I, as a kid in Cincinnati, Ohio, I was riveted to this man who had a very peaceful disposition about himself. And it was almost like, you know, he was very calm and he was very, a matter of fact, and he was interested in telling stories about people and different artists and, and their place on the countdown. When I moved out here to California, I had an opportunity to meet him and, um, it was unique. And I remember running to the bathroom. I was like, oh my God, I got to make sure. So I went over to him and I said, you know, Mr. Kasem. And he said, call me Casey. And I went, I'm not calling you Casey. And I remember telling him about this radio show that I wanted to do. And he, he gave me some advice. And then I said, that's okay, Mr. Kasem. You know, one day I'm going to be like you. You're the reason I got into radio. And he said, I'll see you at the top, son. Gentleman walked over to me and then he gave me this card and said, send it to him. He'll listen. I sent it to him and he called me and he said, didn't I tell you not to send me this stuff? And I remember feeling kind of bad. And I was like, Mr. Kasem, look, I'm really sorry. You're my idol. And I didn't mean any harm of any sort. And I, look, I, I won't bother you again. The next thing out of his mouth is now I got to show you how to do it right. He says, come on over to my house. Oh. And um, that's how 
I, I, I learned to do the radio show I did, Timeless Tracks. It's loosely based on a countdown of the top R&B songs in America over the last six decades, yes. according to the national R&B singles charts. Oh my gosh, you're amazing. I, I had no idea. Casey Casey, I'm wow, had no idea. So now I'm going to switch it a little bit. We're going to go back to some more fashion wonder. Met Gala, who wore it best? Okay, this is kind of cool. I saw the Met Gala and I saw this lady named Sonja Nesterovic. She had on a dress that was made out of a trash bag. She looked hot. She looked good. But I just, I was like, so I kept like looking to see, how can you tell this is a trash bag? You couldn't tell that it was a trash bag at all. But I was, I was mesmerized. I would marry you. Look me up. I will just. She's going to have to do that. She's got to do that. She's going to have to do that. <laughs> now, I have another question. You're super talented. I, I've, <clears throat> I've heard your voice. I've seen you do different shows. I've heard you on the radio. I've seen you on television. I've seen you at events. What I don't know is what's your hidden talent? Okay, people don't know this. One of the things that I love to do is play ping pong. I am a big ping pong player. People don't know that, but I love doing that. Uh, when I, I had cancer, I remember the trainer told me, I need to get your core back again. And I wasn't able to lift things, but he had me pushing the ball back and forth to strengthen the core because I had colon wow. cancer. And that helped me a great deal. So I love playing ping pong. Well, I wouldn't challenge you. I'm not that good. <laughs> so now, uh, tell me something in your field of entertainment. What's something that you work on all the time, often? Um, in my office, one of the things in which I've learned is to go in there and write a list of everything in which I need to do on a daily basis, even if it means just taking out the trash. The number one thing that I've learned is that if there's you plan your work and you work your plan. So when I walk in my office, I write down everything I need to do. And then after I write it down, then I go back and numerically go, which one of these have the priority? Then I time it. And then I start getting these things done. Because I, years ago, I saw this uh, gentleman on television. He was going to play for the Lakers. He said when he came to the Lakers, he came in with a suit while everyone else had on their gym equipment. And someone asked him, why did you come in here wearing a suit? He said, because this for me is a job. And I remembered him saying that. So when I go into my office, I get dressed. And you know, even though it's in the it. bedroom. So I started getting dressed. And I noticed that my demeanor when I'm dressed in there is that I'm really getting a lot of work done. Oh, that's gonna be me from now on. <laughs> I just took that from you. I got it. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay, so something else. I saw you out at an event and it was a fashion event and a dinner and you were zipping by so fast and I, you still stopped. I, I, I called your name out, you stopped, you turned and you said, come on, you can come in with me. I thought to myself that moment, how is this man in the entertainment industry so kind all, all the time? You're, you're always kind, how so? I have, um, I've learned that you have to be a giver. Um, you're not supposed to take all the time. You're supposed to help others. You know, love people, use things, don't confuse the two. And I'm blessed and given an opportunity of a lifetime. So I want to make sure that when people meet me or when they see me that I give them my best because it's all it's all I have. So I want to make sure that when I when I meet people when they see me, that they're glad to to see me. And I if I'm helping somebody else, it it makes me uh, it makes me feel good. Wow. Well, let me just say this. I was going to ask you what your superpower is, but I think we all just saw your superpower. You're a friendly life giver. Every time I saw you, you were giving. And I mean, you would zip past me and turn around and stop and say, come with me. You have been so kind everywhere I've seen you. I, I yeah, never forget that. Never forgot that. Now, I have another question for you. What do you never leave home without as far as an accessory? Well, um, from a physical standpoint, I always have business cards with me because you never know who you're going to meet. But the most important thing that I never leave without is my energy. Because the one thing I've learned is the access to my energy is a privilege. Yes. And so I've learned now, particularly in my life, that I've given so much 
to so many people and the people that I've given to haven't always given back to me. So I've had to learn now that I, the people in which I'm around and that I give my energy to, it's now a privilege for them to be around me. And when I started learning to do that, then I recognized that they were getting the best of me and not me giving the best to them. Okay, I love that. I absolutely love that. That brings me to the next question, because now that we've had to live through COVID, I think that opened all of our eyes. So tell me this, how you navigated through COVID-19. I had to take a, a serious look at myself. I think for, for years, I was giving so much of me and to so many other people. And my house was a pit stop for a while. That's all it was. But the time that I was at home, I realized that I need this place to look like I live here. And I started realizing I needed to do what many people call relevance. I call a reinvention. I had to reinvent myself to some degree. And one of the things I thought was going to get me to the next level was the book. But I needed to make room in my home to be able to have the energy to think. And it didn't look like I was thinking there. It looked like I was existing there. So um, doing the book and I did a, a, a promo, I started, you know, doing a promo reel. And what I did was I made each month a particular month of a project. For example, you know, the book was a month project, you know, television was a month project, radio was a month project. These were things that I thought helped me to try to get better at where I was going and what I was, I was going to do. I was just not going to be denied the opportunity to be a better man. Well, I love that. So tell me this, what's one thing that people don't know about you? Because we are learning quite a bit. What's one thing they don't know about you? Um, I have struggled a lot in trying to be a better person. Um, and I think one of the things that I've learned now was the whole time that I thought that my struggles were holding me back. They were really giving me the tools to become one of the the best. So for me, there's, you know, no more second guessing, no more blaming others, you know, for the problems that I've had in my life of my shortcomings. It's, it's a new day. Yes, it is. And it's, it's being human. Yes. It's being human. I love that. Um, I have one last question for you. With such a beautiful voice, do you sing? I sing in the shower. Oh. I can't. I remember telling LL was asking me, he said, Tyrone, can you rap? I said, yeah, I can rap. And he told me to do something. I said something. He said, boy, you can't rap a present. It oh, doesn't oh, matter. I, never heard I was that. like, whatever, dude, whatever. But no, I'm not a singer. I'm not a singer, um, but I've had great opportunities of a lifetime because of my voice, particularly working with Cheryl Underwood. That's helped me. I was going to ask you about that, Cheryl Underwood. I remember that. Yeah. That, I mean, recently. Yes. So go ahead. Talk to us about that. Well, I, I remember going to Cheryl and I saw her at an event once. And I told her, you know, I'm an R&B historian. You know, I think you could use me on your radio show. And said, she said, I know you are. And then she said, I'll get back to you. Gave her my card. And I went, she's not going to call me. Three days later, she called me. And so I've been on the show doing a 60 second moment of music history. And it's based on, you know, the history of different artists and, you know, their positions either on the charts or their, their biography of who they are. And I mean, she's given me the opportunity of a lifetime. It's just been, oh, been fantastic for me. This new place that you stand in is awesome. Now, I have one last thing for you. I, um, I kind of went through a few things and I had a few things sitting around and I said to myself, this doesn't serve you, but there's the historian that you know that you'll see today that it does serve. So let me show you what I have. To okay. Do. I'm looking forward to this. And so while she's getting that, I just want to tell you guys that Kelly is so cool. Okay. Thank you. All right. I just want to say that. Okay. We got stuff. The bag. I Ooh. want you to, I want you to, I want you to pull out what's in that bag. Pull out the whole. Not, not, not I'm not worried the, about that. I want the, the, the other, the, the other the book. Yes. There's a book in here. There's a bunch of books. books. You can sit that bag down. If you want oh! <laughs> There's quite a few in there. Cash box. Oh my God. And I agree. Oh my God. Look at this. Now, I think, wow. he, I think those serve you better than me, correct? Oh my God. They serve me more than you can ever imagine. And this is so cool. Al Green. Okay. So he's on this cover. 
Okay. What's the year? What's the year? The year is 1974. And here's the deal. 1974, the song Love and Happiness came out. Okay. Song went to number 98 on the charts, on the R&B charts. One of the biggest songs in history for Al Green, but it only stayed on the charts for three weeks. I didn't know that. Only on the charts for three weeks. But look how, look how that song made an impact. It's in so many movies. Yes. It's everywhere now. One of the things that is so important about music is that, you know, for I, I had this interview with somebody recently and I was telling them, they said, I don't like when people are on, you know, that they go from R&B charts to the pop charts. What they don't understand is the pop charts is what makes you. The R&B charts, like, for example, um, you know, Frankie Beverly and Mays is a great group, but they've never been in the top 10 of the pop charts ever. Oh, wow. And so, you know, the pop charts is what makes you the superstar that you become, no matter what they are. And Cashbox is extremely unique because, um, you know, the Jackson 5 only had four, you know, four. They would have had four straight number one singles, but Mama's Pearl went to number two on Billboard. But on Cashbox, it went to number one. And so, which made it five straight singles. And you know what? We wouldn't know this if you weren't the historian that you are. So KA Fashion TV, thank you for coming and joining us today and giving us your life. I'm such a nerd. I'm such a nerd.